Yeah. Right now, it just started. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to speak up or okay. here. Pass a, pass around the camera to people that's talking or whatever. Person next to him, just no. hold it. Okay. I'm not saying it's not one of the That's very like non Yeah. Okay. I'm I was gonna say that. Oh, okay. Alright, alright. So an announcement that uh I have to give to him. Is that there's a, yeah, I mean, if anyone else wants to help me with this. Sure, I can sit and be the live stream. Well, with all the noise in the background, you're going to have to get by people. We've done this a couple times. It's not, yeah. you don't hear Hi. Hello. So you're not. We should have brought the microphone. Talk loud. Oh, you're the front part, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. First announcement is that uh, there is the NATGAT, uh, the National um, Occupy Gathering, or the Occupy National Gathering. They have a website, um, and apparently we're endorsing it. We haven't had any kind of process through our General Assembly or anything like that, other than maybe a couple of Facebook posts, and now we're on their page saying we're in solidarity with them. So... So we should probably pass that, <laughs> if we're going to. Well, I don't think it necessarily... And I'm just going to circle that if uh, if you guys want to discuss that right now. There's not really anything else on the agenda, I don't believe. So, for me, I don't think this is necessarily something that needs to be endorsed. Like, the word endorsing, I don't really like the idea behind that. I mean, sure, if they want to have a gathering, that's awesome, go have a gathering. Um, I don't know if anyone from here is going there. And if that's the reason they're using for who does and doesn't support this gathering, I don't know. But that's just a thought for me to throw out there. They also, on their uh, scheduling page, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says, join our 99-mile march for the vision for a democratic future. And I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to leave that alone. So okay. whoever wants to speak up on that, um, I guess I just want to put out my two cents on, on those same issues. Because um, I, I don't... Wait, hang on. I'm confused. Are we doing announcements or are we in... Are we actually going to discuss it? It sounds well, we like you're starting a stack it. line in the middle of announcements, so I'm yeah. confused. All right. Sorry about that. There, because there's nothing else in the agenda at the moment? I actually have an announcement. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Miscommunication. We're going to continue on then. So, that got is one announcement. <laughs> Actually, I have two. All right, go ahead. Um, 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, myself, Terry, Midori, and Michael will be at uh, the corporate council having a meeting about DFM stupidity and what they're going to do about that, if anything. So hopefully that goes well. Um, so I'll let everybody know, like probably to group me or whatever, how that went. Um, I also got a call from uh, uh, the Bishop of State thing. Yes. The meeting has been moved from Friday to Monday at 8.30 a.m. with them. So we'll find out on Monday how that meeting went and what happens as a result of that meeting. Okay. I have I have a couple announcements. They're food related. One is uh, we got an offer for 100 unexpired MREs, meals ready to eat, from an uh, interesting source. It's from Ziaki, Zi Akiyamano Kaapano Aki of uh, Makavalu, the local uh, uh, Hawaiian act native uh, act native Hawaiian activist group based out of the University of Hawaii. Um, so they're trying to show solidarity. They will be the prime organizers of La Poi Poi Ea at the end of July here. So it, it'll be a good uh, opportunity to initiate the yeah. historic uh, Praise be to God. bridge uh, <laughs> building. I, I want uh, Laulani to be part of the first discussion because she's worked so hard trying to yes. get these groups together. But when I thought it. Huh? 
The La Foyhoye will be um, the last Sunday in July. It's a commemoration of an event that happened on July 31st, 1843. There's always a thing happening here. If Makavalu is involved, it's, it'll probably be a lot of people because they're, they're young and they're really into this kind of stuff. They're into media. They have a page on Facebook and Z also has a page if you want to check it out. So that's the first food-related announcement. Second food-related announcement is that I got a I got a little email from Sherry, of David Sherry. She said they found a really big cookie pot. She took it as a sign saying that instead of bringing bread on Sundays, to bring chili. <laughs> so she's going to do that and leave the pot. So if anybody can find you. A third announcement is I got an email. I should have brought it. I printed it out and I should have brought it. Ikaika Hussey, uh, Hawaii Independent, and he's the guy that kind of comes down here every now and then. He's going to put uh, Deoccupy Honolulu as one of the positives uh, of Honolulu in the coming year. So there was a questionnaire, and I'll post it on the forum, like uh, what, uh, who to contact, how to get involved, what's being planned for the next year. So that's, that's kind of interesting. People can think on that will probably require some discussion, um, but I will I will post the questions uh, on the uh, the occupied forum. And uh, for announcements, that those are my announcements. Oh, it's like right now. Whenever you're ready. I'll hang up on Damien. Yeah. Anyway, um, so. Just announcements for like what's coming up, the panel discussion, the event. We got. I'm not sure if any guys know this person, but Henry Curtis agreed to come and participate as a speaker. Henry Curtis is from Life of the Land. Uh, he wrote Wayfinder, the uh, um, the energy program, got he's national recognition. Guy. You know, he's a really awesome guy, long time activist, and really really cool. And we should do this to him when he comes. Uh, <laughs> I met him through Cap Radio in January. Um, so far, if anyone wants a flyer, I can pass them out. That's for the June 20th. This that's is next week. Please take one, pass it around. Um, so, um, what about, what else, what else, what else? Um, for that, uh, June 20th, we also have the occupation for Bishop of State, Landlord and Justice, that case that's going on with the Vegas family. Next week, on eight, starting from the 18th to Friday, the family will actually be camping out with us. Wow. Which is really neat. When is it up. here? I talked to her. They have a meeting at 8.30 on Monday. Yeah. Depending on how that meeting goes, this depends on if we're actually doing anything. Huh? Depending on how that meeting goes is... Well, well I mean, that's just what you guys know that's what the planning process is like. Unless we, um, because Bishop of State called her on Monday morning saying, hey, don't go public yet, just wait till Thursday yeah. or Friday. So we find, actually find out what we do um, tonight or tomorrow. Oh. Ah, which is, we'll go, anyway, we'll be outside. Of the, we'll be outside on the pass on the property information, uh, what the value is worth, what the state is in, um, and the map, what that looks like. That's what that is. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I got an official cop. I'm getting an official copy of Bernice Ta'ahi Bishop's will tomorrow at the archives um, to get everyone a little more educated on what that estate is really about. Okay. Uh, so, for the notes, uh, you mentioned the 18th to Friday. Is that in July? That's June. That's okay, June. sorry. That's June. And where is this at? At um, House in the Macaron. That's on King, South King Street, 567 South King <coughs> Street at Kobayaho Plaza, um, which is outside the Kamehameha School's Bishop of State Land Assets Division Management Office. Wow. And that is right down this way? Yeah, yeah. it's right down the road. It's, it's kind of across the street from Honolulu Hall. Yeah. And that's the yeah. week long encampment we're having there? Yes. Okay. And then once again, the family will be there if we try to follow through. Um, me and Damien and Nova and Andrea, um, we did the show on Alelo yesterday um, for her case and stuff like that. It actually went pretty well. I never hosted a show before, just kind of winged it. <laughs> When's it going to be? When is it going to air? Yeah. It's going to air next week. Well, deciding on what happens Thursday or Friday. What's it called? Um, the show. No, I'm not going to find out until Monday. Find out. Or Monday, yeah, sorry, Monday. Yeah. But when it's up, when once we find out, um, Friday or Monday, I keep hearing this thing. Um, but yeah, that's when we'll find out. Me and Damien and Oren were outside documenting 
at her place, like literally oh, all yeah, day. That's, that's we documented crazy. the whole thing. Wow. We even got an underwater camera and like oh, wow. all day. Anyway, so um, that's that's what's going on. My other announcement is um, I'm passing around this informational sheet about the next um, um, sign holding at Cunea for uh, Monsanto anti-GMO. There's going to be um, GMO free Hawaii and Kauai did theirs. Now let's make a GMO free Oahu. And so there's going to be a big, huge thing of people gathering with signs and stuff like that. And James Fa um, Macy, kind of going back with him back and forth and trying to get some of you guys to go out there, show some solidarity because I know we all don't want chemical welfare at our home. Very Yay! Cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yay! No more chemical warfare at our home. And um, so um, we're all um, we're thinking about. I'm thinking about actually showing the Stop Monsanto chemical warfare. Fair, um, video that my friend ju just released last week for the event June 20th and for the possible occupation for next week. So that's what's going on. Any questions? Good. No, just a okay. quick announcement. I do have like... Oh, no, no, I have a little bit one more thing. Uh, it's on yours. Okay. Uh, well, I got like the booth and everything ready for that too. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. yeah. I thought I was looking at you. Yeah, we need some speakers. That's speakers and then maybe one more internet connection. Dr. Hector Venezuela, he's actually on the film that will be projecting. He's going to be here next week. Um, the One of the panel attorneys from the whole Ocali Development Project will be speaking at the June 20th event, too. Um, Dr. Jeff Sky, he's a research scientist at Cunea Ag, and he's going to be speaking, too, along with Henry Curtis. And Dr. Um, Hana Mi um, Morimoto, Miyamoto, she's a policy analyst for environment, transportation, and economics here in the state. I met her at the Hawaii Democratic Party Convention, and then there's Dr. Juanita Matthews, who also has a PhD in genetic engineering, and she'll be speaking too. Um, for the GMO thing, um, sorry, hold on. <laughs> for the GMO thing, um, uh, I, oh yeah, for Ho'opili, um, we all know that the decision was approved, sadly, but um, Dr. Keone Dudley, along with Eric Sykes, if you guys know who Leonard Peltier is, he was one of the panel attorneys um, representing him during that time. He was representing um, Clayton Key for the whole Philly stuff. Um, but we are going to appeal, and I'm going to hopefully start. Up, I'm gonna well, not hopefully. I'm going to start up a, a campaign here. That's why I came here. I was like making signs, and that's why Orrin and Sam left. We need to make signs. We need to jump on, jump the gun because it's gonna be a long um, process, and we need to be more familiar with um, uh, with the protection of this land, food security, and really. Um, good integrative sustainable resource management and I'll be willing to do a teaching or whatever but like I said again Dr. Keone Dudley will be here to talk to you guys all about that and what the process is going to look like. Um, if you guys wish to petition or send a petition, um, stop to Oakley.com, save Oahu farmland. And, um, but yeah, he'll be here. Not just speakers, I meant like computer speakers though. Just, oh. We need to find like something to get audio out there. Um, I can get speakers. My friend is a, he actually, he's actually helping us with the PA system in the future. He's a manager at Easy Music Center and he'll be helping us with speakers and stuff like that. And I have, um, hopefully, if you guys, any of you, Gorilla Farmers Market, we didn't even really want that to happen, but we're not gorillas or farmers. So if you guys oh, can do that, so, that would be cool. That's um, really yeah, so Gorilla Farm, yeah. Um, Michael Brody and Jeremy yeah, yeah. would be great people to talk to about that. We Sam, did yesterday. You talked to them? Yeah. Both of them. I would talk to Michael Brody and then Eddie and talk to Jeremy. Okay, sweet. Okay. Um, Sam, when uh, when he comes back, you can talk to him about uh, his aunt and uncle do a farmer's market thing. So they might be able to, yeah, go somewhere with that. Yeah. Uh, I have more questions about, because uh, you were naming a bunch of doctors. I got Miyamoto, Matthews, uh, and a few names. flyer that I gave you. Yeah? Is in here? Oh, flyer. I see. Cool, cool, cool. This is the thing to announce. Walter Wright. Ruby Ruby Alright, ready? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm not done. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to be on sorry, stack. I wasn't. Oh, wow. I wasn't. Okay. I'm not. Sorry about that. Fine. Um, and he actually knew that. 
<laughs> Sorry, mine is in my bag. Um, cool. um, this is Walter Red. Walter Ritty. Red. Ritty. Ritty. Walter Ritty. Whatever. Walter Ritty. <laughs> I just know old, old long guy. time yeah, Hawaiian old school activist. Yeah. He announced his candidacy for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which he was a part of the creation of in the se in the seventies. Is running for trustee at large. Um, I've done I've um, done some work with him. He's a really awesome guy. I believe that he should be a reason to vote this year um, if you, in your local state election. Um, his story's in there. If you have any questions about him, um, um, ask me or whatever. Or if you, if you guys want to meet him, I can arrange that too. Um, but I think he'd be a really awesome. He was actually going to speak for us at our June 20th event, but that's when he goes back to Molokai, so he's not going to be there for us. But please take a look at the article today. Um, really, really um, historical events happening all around us all the time. Okay. And actually, Dan Lowe's in this article, too. Mm -hmm. oh. I don't have a direct response to this. I'm, uh, I'm on the Facebook group, Lawful Hawaiian Government, and one of them was angry with Walter Ritty and had somebody else they wanted to vote for because Walter Ritty said that LHG was a full of shit government. I can't. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. They kind of. Oh, he said that? Oh. He said that? Oh, well, I, I gotta go eat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, for all, that's it for all of my announcements. If you guys have any questions, let me know after this. Okay, just an event. Is just an event if it doesn't um, coincide. With any other event, on June 28th, there's going to be Convoy of Hope. There's going to be one at the stadium. There's going to be one at McKinley High School. Um, it's a church-related event, but they're having free haircut, uh, free barbecue lunch. I'm going to be there with um, my work. So <laughs> if you want to come stop by, it starts at 9, and it ends at 1 to 2. Works here, let's uh, McKin there's going to be one at McKinley High School, which is close by, and then there's going to be one at the stadium, the fairground. That's not so free haircut, free barbecue lunch, free entertainment, type of thing. What date? Uh, what date? June 28th. Um, there's going to be free groceries as well, so... If you want to stop by, oh, happy birthday! The 28th is at the same time, that's this, uh... Monsanto action happens at Kamiya, though. Yeah, if, if it doesn't coincide, like, just stop Well, yours by. is in the morning, so... Yeah, it's in the morning, it's 9 to 1. Yeah, 9 to 1 p.m. Yeah. Okay, and then... And then I'll go to 3. So, from the camera, I'll go to 5 on the Did anyone get there? Yeah. What? Uh, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of... Bo, come sit. I probably have like 50. Give me a second. All right. So I, I think you've talked enough. I know. I think I talked enough, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I, I, I'm still writing down some stuff. Because you came small when you were when you were texting. Whatever. It's on the morning, right? All right. So if there are no more announcements, so uh, we can move on to proposals. I, I'm unaware of any proposals that we have to go through yeah. right now, except for the NatGat thing, if we want to get into that. I think we'll talk about it. Okay, I'd like to research on it. I'd rather research it first. I would just start to vote on it on Tuesday. Well, we can enforce it sooner the better, I feel like. If you have a motion on it, yeah. That'll come out of the format. Can we open up stack line on that? Alright, so, I'm leaving. You're taking off? Oh, I'll be back. Oh, yeah. Another announcement. Sorry. 
we have our meeting with Corporation Council. Already, already done. Announced. You didn't announce it? Oh, yeah, sorry. But it's good. Sorry, it's guys. Good. <laughs> if they want to join, well, we yeah, actually No, it's, it's not Michael if any. And, or yeah, yeah they, they were very specific about who was the last meeting. Yeah, they were. So, uh, I would yeah, like so. to have people on standby if it doesn't go well. I'll go. Right at Honolulu Valley yeah. if they don't need yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm right. I'll be yeah. right there with you. Okay. No, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got an extra hand to someone else? We're not to stay color coordinated over there. <laughs> so I got two. You know, maybe for a day, just to prove a point. Yeah, dude. Okay, point of uh, process. So, if there's uh, no more announcements to get into, <laughs> we'll just move on to discussion. <laughs> Uh, there's no proposals on the table, so hopefully we can get something out of this discussion for, uh, for Thursday. So, today is Thursday. Tuesday, then. Tuesday, then. Excuse me. Alright, so, opening up, um, NatGat on Twitter or on their website, um, email, or rather, the URL is, uh, occupynationalgathering.com. Um, it's mobile accessible. It's, uh, it's about a international or rather a National Occupy conference that takes place in uh, Philadelphia, I believe it was. It's, um, it's an event that falls on the 4th of July, I believe. I think it's like three days in, three days June out. June 30th to July 4th. June 30th to July 4th, okay. So five days. Right, there is a, um, on the 5th, there is a march from Independence Mall to all the way to Wall Street, which is, I guess, a 99-mile march, which is... Uh, the idea behind it. Um, earlier today, we were on their website saying that, yeah, and Guitar Army will be leading it. Um, on their website, it was saying that we had endorsed it, that that our home Occupy, Occupy Honolulu, or, yeah, Occupy Honolulu was endorsing it. That never came up. That might have been because they misconstrued a Facebook post, perhaps. Yeah, we got that, that, that. Um, so now I'm just going to open it up. Um, we're going to read off what it is. Just say, go for it. Is. So Nova's going to read off uh, the scrap page, I think. Okay, it's from uh, the Occupy National Gathering site that leads you to uh, the Wall Street uh, site. They say post via Occupy Together. So there's obviously three different you know, entities. I'm trying to get this going. The Occupy National Gathering is a national coordination coordinated event which will take place from June 30th to July 4th in Philadelphia. The Occupy Movement will convey the Occupy National Gathering in a, in the vicinity of Philadelphia's Independence Mall for a week of direct actions, movement building, and the creation of a vision for a democratic future. The National Gathering will kick off with a massive march with Healthcare Now and will continue on July 5th with the attendees, attendees to join the Guitar Army for a 99-mile march from Philadelphia to Wall Street in Lower Manhattan. Perhaps the highlight of the gathering will be the crafting of a vision of a democratic future. On July 4th, the National Gathering, NATCAT, will facilitate a vision process designed to allow all voices to be heard while allowing repeat visions to organically rise to the top together by all those who choose to participate. A vision of democratic future will be conceived. Learn more about this and blah, blah, blah. Um, so basically what they're trying to say is uh, they're going to come up with a formulated idea for Occupy. And... Uh, Everybody that they're allowing to have say in it, which I guess is all the people Andrew, that is see. able to meet, is all the people that is able to actually meet within uh, Philadelphia and go all the way to Wall Street, whatever, is able to have a voice in what they want to be heard. Uh, the thing that I, I'm not finding on their site, they're not being real specific on how the voting process of that will go. I've heard from numerous sources but again, that's not directly from them. That they're gonna, it's gonna be of set people, and that there's a bunch of rules and ranks on how they're gonna allow this voting. So that's that's where the question becomes: is you know, is that how we envision ourselves as an occupied movement as we're in? So that's what you know. For us to be endorsing or someone to say that we're endorsed, yeah. we need to understand 
exactly the processes that they're trying to do, what uh, what our concerns about it is, and you know how we perceive it. So. Anybody? Um, Go ahead. No, I just you know, I haven't done anything. But I really automatic, but I'm on automatic suspicions anyway. One is that anyone that's familiar with, with uh, Occupy knows how, what an endorsement would, would come out of a General Assembly statement saying the General you know, Assembly says blah, you know, and since we didn't do that, a little suspect, and I'm also a little suspect, uh, suspicious, uh, because the other characteristic of Occupy is this, this transparency, how things happen and how things participate and if they're not specifying that then that's another you know point that I'm suspicious about and the third is that because because the Occupy movement is has such force there are a lot of um, um, political kind of movements that might want to try and I, I don't want to say exploit moment. but but exploit you know so that, that's where my head is that if anybody
had a lot of success in that St. Louis. So I think this is just kind of, of an extension of that. You know, whether it works out for them or not, because you're asking a lot for people who are like in California, Arizona, you know, especially asking a lot for a bunch of occupiers in Honolulu to, to kind of show off. So that's just my thought. Like, without getting too much into it, that's just kind of my thought. It might be big just because they, you know, maybe they legitimately want, you know, on the first day to just hammer out everything for the next following day. Because the flip side of that is if they announce, the organizers announce everything that's going to take place, then they're automatically assuming a leadership position within that occupation. And maybe they're wary of that. So I don't think it's quite as nefarious as what people are making out. Yes, it's live. Okay. She pulled down the tent for Okay, so having gone through a big national and international event in Chicago, where we planned out actions from the 12th of May all the way through the 22nd, and then stuff got tacked on for days out of rage. Um, <laughs> We had stuff getting finalized for days of action uh, within days of buses showing up from across the country. Um, so again, back to that, it may not be you know such a thing. Like it's still kind of early in relative terms to when you actually need some of that shit hammered out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those things. That if you're interested in going, you're kind of gonna you know gonna go. Um, and this action versus that action probably is not going to dictate that. You're either down with the concept or you're not. You can afford to go to the concept or you're not, which leads me to my issue of, um, yeah, it's harder for Hawaii and it's harder for Alaska. Um, but it's, I think they said something you had read off that if you're willing to participate, um, I got real big issues with that because I think there's a lot of people that are willing to participate, but... I don't know, can't afford to go, maybe have family and kids and can't go and take off time to travel to this thing and, yeah. and vacation time. There's there's a lot of factors to that and if they're sitting here and trying to make some big declaration of something for the entire movement without the ability to reach out and help make sure that people are coming from across everywhere. And I don't mean just the U.S. I'm talking global, because uh, yeah. I too am a you know no borders, no borders world type of gal. <laughs> um, but I have issue with uh, too many voices not being able to be represented with the Midwest conferences and stuff. They weren't trying to make declarations for an entire movement. They were trying to network between uh, different occupations within those regions. That's great. Uh, yeah, I do think this was bred out of a, a counter something else, which again is great. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not down with the whole let's make a declaration for the movement without even reaching out and trying to make sure that every single occupation across this freaking globe is represented. So I got I got an issue of representation. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hey, yeah, I fully agree with that, but on their website... Was there a stack? It, Sorry. Um, on their website, it does say something about um, that this is... We all know this is not going to be a full representation of the movement and that it will always remain local. Um, and, and just because we are Hawaii and it's way harder for us to go out there, 
um, and, and you're going to hit the problem with the kids and the family and the job and that no matter where you are. So I don't... Yeah, but then I, why do you try to declare something for the entire movement if you know that that's such a major issue? That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't think... I think they realize this, but, you know, that's why... I don't think they are trying to say this is the movement, you know, just like Occupy Honolulu does not represent Occupy, you know, as a whole. We represent this, this group. Um, and they say that on there, it will always remain local, but we did is mostly about movement building, you know, that it's, you know, we do need to get together. And I don't think any of us are having a problem with the getting together part. It's, but I think they realize that, Ups that they're and downs. representing us. May I ask some clarification on, on that as far as what it says on the website as far as their, their driven goals? Yeah, it might be under the what to expect part, I think. Yeah, I've got an issue with the whole let's make a declaration mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, absolutely. You are I, not I speaking I think without for me. that I probably wouldn't be giving a shit. Yeah. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, no, get together, it network. Say, it just says what the expect says in bringing this stuff. Where to sleep. With the brain, there's even a section about uh, what to do if you get rusted. <laughs> See, they talk in great detail about where to eat, where to do all those things, where to get everything that'll take care of you. But they don't talk about what they're doing. Now. That's that's uh, pretty big. Maybe on the. Oh, no, that's the group. Do you have something to say? Continue talking though, because we're like, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess. Hey, hang on, he is talking. Sorry about that. testify, you know, they can't, I mean, it's just as the end, they got to lose the whole day to sit around at the uh, legislature and give testimony, and then the chair can postpone it to another day and lose the whole day. So, by being a member of the Mental Health Association of Maui, uh, when they want to give testimony, they send it to me, I go in and I give the testimony, and it, it works for them, and it works for me, I'm a member. But it's not, you know, for them, it's not like coming over here, but it's better than nothing. So, yeah, that's just what I'm thinking. If there's somebody like in California or wherever uh, who could represent Dr. Pai, at least you got to represent him. And I don't know if that's useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as for uh, what they're... I mean, it, they break it down in all sorts of things. What I think we're getting at is uh, the section that says, is it the intent of the vision for a democratic future that it will be represented, representative of the movement? Their answer is no. The vision will only represent those who choose to participate. It is in no way binding or representative of the movement as a whole. It is simply, it will simply be the product of thousands of people dedicated to democratic process who have chosen to have their voices heard at the momentous event. The only problem with that is, is, you know, there's been a lot of media. I mean, we got clips all over the place of a lot of, a lot of people with uh, news agencies, people that just does, you know, uh, sidestep shows and, you know, all, all this crazy stuff. I mean, we got one that's really, really hilarious that's making kind of fun, but also making some really good points in what the Occupy movement should be looking to in the future. But, you know, as we all know, there's variances in that. With this, because of this going on, you know for a fact, like, if we say something, the whole dang island starts talking about it, and it involves other islands. And next thing you know, if we make a major decision for something that goes on here, Maui and uh, uh, Hilo will both respond of, oh, wait, what's going on? Because we talk to each other on Twitter all the time. So as soon as something that's this big comes along, what's going to happen with the media? The media is going to pinpoint that is this is what Occupy wants. 
their intention may be well, but I think uh, myself, the problem that I'm seeing is because it's only uh, focusing on the people that show up, what? Uh, the people that show up, it's not really representing as a whole movement. And with that, we're a movement that survives off the public, you know, as a public forum, you know, throughout each state, city, and everything else. And if you kind of take away that entity, and you just got a group of people sitting there making decisions of what they want to see everything happen, that may be good for those people, but how does it help anyone else? And I think by allowing a voting process that does give the movement of a way to vote, they should also have a voting process that allows the public to be able to view what they feel may be pertinent that they would like to see from the Occupy movement. And of course you're going to have people that bash, people that support, people that give good, good advice, people that give bad advice. But that's where we can at least take all that and formulate an idea of what the public at least would like us to try and do. And, you know, about people that are, are not associated with Occupy, but are like part of the, have something to say about things. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, because I mean, here we allow people to come up, you know, you know, to make uh, decisions. You know, they're able to push in uh, proposals. They're able to jump right to the top without even meeting all our, all our requirements that we have for our own group, you know, just because we want the public's input. So if they're going to sit here and have something like this, why aren't they going to hold to the same standard in allowing a public uh, input? You know, and without that public input, we lose sight of what the public Sorry, is wanting. And which, in, to me, it seems like the same thing that our federal government has done. Our federal government says they lost sight of the people, and the people say they lost sight of the federal government. So why are we going to maintain that same kind of stance when there's definitely feasible means to allow a voting system, you know, I mean, that's one of the things that people vote, you know, complain about the most is here the federal government spends millions for a voting process in today's technology. It's, it is much easier and yeah, okay, maybe there's ways of hacking and screwing things up, but there's, there's a definite way of being able to, you know, segregate, occupy the public and, and then that can drive the means of how things go at this event to create a formulated idea for this group but it, with knowledge and knowing that there's most likely going to be a lot of media coverage and wanting to pinpoint that's what Occupy wants and it's just not that group. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned about representation. And I, I think that gets into a whole area of where it makes somebody out to be like a leader and like our speaker, which um, I don't think a lot. It's not not that it's a bad idea. It's just, it's kind of counterintuitive to how we normally run things. Um, the other thing about the national gathering, it seems to me like it's just like any other occupation, right? They're just really promoting it. You know, it can be ran just like any other occupation. Any member of society can come into any occupation, in theory, as long as they're open, and be a part of that occupation. So, I mean, if we start looking at it from a viewpoint of, well, they're just going to start an occupation for a week, then that kind of absolves the whole thing of, like, representation and just represent the movement or whatever, and just treat it as its own separate entity, which it sounds like that's what they're wanting to do, and they recognize that. So, any one of us could go and, you know, and start an occupation. You know, in Chicago, there was like five of them, you know, with all the different boroughs or, and, uh, in Chicago. And then they had people who actually had the means to come down to occupy Chicago. And it was actually generally the people that started other occupations because that's where they lived in Chicago. So, I mean, if we start, if we think about it like that, I don't think it's really a bad thing. They just are presenting it in a way of this is how we want to do it, you know. So, I mean, maybe that's one way to look at it. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to address is about the voting or whatever. And I think, for me at least, that's the disconnect because it's not voting, what we do here. It's consensus. We're agreeing on something. It isn't like a democratic vote, right, where simple majority wins or, or any, 
anything like that. It's a consensus. We either come to, to an agreement through discussion of this is what we're going to do, or we don't. And it gets postponed until people decide that either they're completely okay with it, or they just don't give a shit enough about it to try and block it any further, and then it goes through. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call it voting. And if you start getting into, uh, if you start looking at it, I guess, as voting, then I think we start getting into a really weird area. Because, like you said, I, I don't think it's any better than what our government has tried to come up with. You know, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that 50 point zero 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 nine percent gets to decide for that other 49 or 48 point whatever percent on any issue. Like, it's just, it's a recipe for disaster because on any given issue, half of your population is pissed off because it didn't go their way. You know, that's not what occupied, at least to me, you know, speaking just purely personal, that's not what Occupy to me is about. It's, it's about consensus and it's about that. If we start getting into the stuff like, um, you know, like online voting or doing things like via Skype to allow people to like Skype in on stack and stuff, then that just opens like a whole can of worms of people who are coming in for um, nefarious intent. You know, because it's not, you know, like, what's to stop the entire Tea Party movement from trashing it via Skype? You know, what, what's to stop anyone from doing that? And, and in theory, we can't even control that here, because, like, if the Tea Party wanted to show up, if we were, if we held to our consensus model, then the whole, the whole fucking dog and pony show's over. <laughs> right? I mean, Shh, don't give away our secret. Yeah, you know? That's our Achilles take heel. Shut up. Time. You know, well, I think it's pretty well known. So, so we actually, and the comment that I made earlier today was, I thought I left this discussion in Chicago because we actually had this very same discussion about voting and Skype and, and all that crap. And uh, straight up, I was the one that blocked it in our committee, and we had we had we had the technology to do it and to do it responsibly, and to cut out 99% of the bullshit that would be able to scam it and, and warp it into something that it's not. And I, I blocked it on principle. Like, I'm sorry. You know, I understand that people have lives, and they have kids, and they have jobs, and they have all that crap, or whatever, but GA isn't about voting. GA is about consensus building, and community building, and, and trying to do something that's never been done before. And that requires you to physically be here. And if you're not physically here, you know, I don't think you really have a bitch about any kind of any kind of proposal or anything that comes out of a general assembly. You know, it sucks sometimes, for sure. There was a lot of votes in Chicago that I wish I would have had a voice in, but I wasn't there. There's a million ways that people can help out and to help support a movement. You don't have to physically be at every GA to do that. And I think we owe it. You know, if you start getting into to online voting, then it just, to me, it just looks like political polling. You know, it, we come to a decision organically for a reason, and it makes sense for this group at that point in time. But if you start taking in a bunch of external factors or whatever that should be brought up here, then you start becoming at the will of other individuals who have no real investment in what's taking place. You know, we have an actual encampment. We have a lot more here than what a lot of occupations do. And it takes a lot to sustain that. And I think, you know, there's responsibility in that. And, and a bunch of armchair revolutionaries on Skype can fuck that up in a heartbeat. So, that's just my concern. Okay. Okay, for now. Well, okay, the, the part that, uh, like, Andrew was talking about, it, they specifically say the product of thousands of people dedicated to the democratic process. Are we talking direct democracy or are we yeah, talking representative? Yeah, yeah. I believe in direct democracy, but that's, you know, not... Yeah, but this, that's not the right. way, that's the way the they're, they're right. talking yeah. about is, you know, how do you know exactly what what angle they're, they're saying. I mean, to me, democratic process, yeah, okay, it could be consensus, but they don't mention that. They mention people, 
Got that it. has, like it says, vision will only represent those who participate. It is not binding or representative of the movement as a whole. It will simply be the product of thousands of people dedicated to the democratic process. Well, I mean, that's well, the democratic process as we know it in this country is a voting system, and consensus is very easily taken to any type of vote. We can do a consensus and not have it yes or no. You know, so I mean, skyping it or whatever. And like you said, there is many ways of controlling that. You know, there's many ways of controlling all these entities. Everybody knows it. It, it doesn't take, uh, you know, a rocket, a rocket scientist to be able to figure it all out. The technology is there. Most of us is using bits and pieces of it left and right. So getting something that like that to work out is easy. You know, and yeah, it may take a couple thousand dollars to get something that's proactive for the whole nation or whatever. It'll take a few thousand and take some dedicated people wanting to work with it and get it done. Get it done on a, a real time scale instead of waiting days or a month to try and get all this stuff but you know if there's thousands of people that want to go to this then that means there's thousands of people that's interested in it. Thousands of people are interested and we could do this. But to sit there and say democratic process is what scares me about it because it's yes or no. And as we know the media, the media loves to hammer on Occupy. No matter what, no matter what good comes out of it, you don't hear good, you hear about points that they want to make controversial if it is or not. You know, or they, and misreporting and misinformation. Right. They, they leave bits and pieces of the information out just so they can have something there to have drama. <laughs> make, it's hard to. I know, Bo. Yeah, you, your voice. Bo, you got to get on stack. Get on stack. Get on stack. <laughs> but uh, respect the speaker. <laughs> but you know, it's it, you know, if you have if you have those entities that we all know is out there picking and choosing and deciding what they want to pick out. And people can say I'm doing the same thing, but this is that whole section. That, that's all it says. You know, that's not picking and choosing, that's saying the whole thing, and it leaves it off as that. So are we able to ask them for clarification before I, we... I actually did send them, I sent it to them on their site, and it's actually visible by everyone that goes to this site. So, you know, it's not just going to be straight to them. It's something that I opened up for everyone to be able to answer to, but I have not yet seen anybody answer to it. So, you know, and I even announced who we are that's asking, you know, this question, why we're asking it, uh, you know, I, I just left the basic question of this is what's up, this is what we're concerned about, what's the answer to it? You know, and I haven't gotten anything yet, so hopefully someone's watching, <laughs> but uh, we'll get an answer here, but that that's the part that scares me is if you want to make a democratic process, define what, what way you're taking it. And are you allowing the public? And is this going to be, you know, something that could be possibly seen for everyone? If they want to make it for the people that's there, that's fine. But why wouldn't other people that can't afford it, especially knowing or knowing the group of Occupy as a whole, not everyone is involved that has jobs. You know, not everyone has places. Not everybody has accessibility to. A thousand, two thousand, four thousand dollars worth of equipment to try and keep things going for their group. So with that in mind, you would think that they would try to make it accessible in some way, so you know everybody can have a voice. I mean, I can't, I can't afford two thousand dollars to go there because I afford, you know, equipment to be able to keep things going. So why not spend a little bit of time and say, hey, let's have everybody involved, at least watch and know what's going on instead of clips that we'll find out later that's been split up by someone that wants to make drama. Next. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, the, the democratic process thing, I mean, that, that I agree that is kind of weird, but I don't know if that's anything to jump on as, like, you know, nefarious, is like, you know, we were talking about before, because, I mean, we do believe in direct democracy, you know, and stuff like that. I see. Um, well, I believe, and other people have mentioned here today, <laughs> but, um, I, I think, oh, I forgot what the other thing I was going to say. All right, you're next. Okay. And then down. Um. No, no. Okay. Um. It sounds to me like we're, we're getting to a point with this NatGat discussion that it, worst case scenario, it's some kind of Democratic Party thing trying to get people to vote yeah. for certain candidates. Best case scenario, it's another camp. 
and there's other events that are going on in that area right around the same time. So hopefully, it, this could be a really big positive thing. So I'm willing to say to them, like, yeah, sure, go have fun, send us a postcard. <laughs> but other than that, there for me, there isn't a lot of information, probably for good reason, about what's going on there. So. That's it from me. I can hand this notebook off to anyone if there's any other points to make announcements, uh, proposals, whatnot. I just have a question really quickly about what's been discussed about this NATGAT thing, and I just want to know if we've discussed the fact that we live in a sovereign nation, and that Occupy Honolulu doesn't necessarily even have anything to do with the United States. That's true. Um, and, and maybe we should be talking about it from that angle. Because if, if we're going to be, like, pushing this, uh, sovereignty stuff, then we should really be considering that when we see our name being posted on something for a United States national gathering, when we don't even support the, um, United States occupation of this island. There, there were a couple of people that mentioned, uh, no, no border type of issues. Yeah, it's, well, it's that, not yeah. it's not really a, just a no border issue though. It's a specifically like a colonialist like like the, like this could be like a colonialist like, thing, you know, colonialist chauvinism, saying that Occupy Honolulu is you know part of the United States, but because the maps say so. But <laughs> like if you look at yeah, if you no look annexation at, treaty. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you look at if you look at the way things are legally set up, we shouldn't even be part of the yeah, United we, States. We are, actually. So, <laughs> like, why why are we being put on this list of people within the nation? You, you know what I mean? It, it seems kind of fishy. It seems really colonialist, and like that's what makes me really uncomfortable about about this situation, particularly is how it, it is all of the chauvinism that's been involved. I had a uh, direct response to what Sam just said. So, something else with NatGat is that they are being, I guess, endorsed. This word gets thrown off a lot between uh, NatGat and uh, Occupy Tour, or Occupy Tour, which is, um, which is like a, no, 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 excuse me, um, Occupy Caravan is what it's called. It's like a series of buses that are going from all over the United States meeting up in Philadelphia for this and people are arranging for rides and where they need to go and such and such from that. But something I noticed on their um, on their flyers for it, and you can look this up for yourself, just look up uh, Occupy Caravan, is that uh, it says for something like freedom, justice, and democracy in the corner. And then you have these buses being led by um, Minutemen. Colonial Minutemen with drums and stuff. So um, that supports the whole kind of colonial character that seems to be forming around this. And then Sugar does have something to say, but you you were giving me a direct response. Yeah. Time, so. Well, I just wanted to add something about that poster that that Blade was talking about. The poster is also covered with all sorts of American flag stuff. And the buses that are being portrayed on there look like the magic bus from, you know, like the night, nice, you know what I'm talking about, like the, the LSD, trippy, hippie, hippie bus. And, like, I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with that sort of, like, association between, like, Occupy and that sort of, like, behavior that led into the, ah, oh, the 80s, ah, oh, oh, no. AIDS is everywhere, and, and like, we're just doing a bunch of cocaine now. Like, I'm just kind of worried about, about the way these sort of, like, mass political movements seem to work out over the course of several decades in this country. Like, people kind of go nuts. And when I say this country, I mean the United States of America, not the sovereign nation of Hawaii, necessarily. <laughs> But I think we should be really, really looking at the way that these people are talking. Like, endorsed isn't a word that I would want to see on a website of, uh, like this. You know what I mean? I'd like to see stand in solidarity with, as opposed to, let's endorse this. Because that's, that's, that, that's the word to the 1%. That's money in politics words. Yeah.
That actually leads right into... Okay. Um, sorry, guys. So, yeah, that leads right into what um, Occupy Chicago did to endorse the Midwest Conference is we did an endorsement because we were helping uh, with supplies, we were helping with financial support. There are things that came along with that, that as Chicago, we were willing to go ahead and put in additional resources. But within the Occupy the, or the Midwest Conference, what it was, was all the PR was not this has been endorsed by this, 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 and this, and this group. It was a group, you know, people from X amount of, you know, cities or, you know, occupations were represented. I didn't even say that they represented those occupations. It's just that people from those areas were there. I would be far more comfortable with this if they were going that route of once people were there or once they knew people were coming from, you know, places where they got commitments that they could say, you know, people from these areas are, are coming to participate in this versus endorsements, especially from groups that haven't endorsed it and haven't, don't really have the means in order to uh, participate. I'm also a little annoyed by the concept of willing to participate because I'm sure there are thousands of people that are willing to participate but can't due to limitations and that really feels very elitist to me. Um, but yeah, the, the the concept of endorsement, I would, as my, you know, being here all of a week, <laughs> um, and very new, um, my gut reaction would be to ask to have that taken off, especially since we haven't done that. Um, the, uh, well, direct response real fast. Um, Jake here did send an email to them saying that we hadn't endorsed it yet and to remove it until we, uh, and if we do. We are removed. And so they've done that. Nova oh, was looking at the fantastic. site, and our name is no longer on there. So fantastic. we can still ask them to maybe switch it from endorse to stand in solidarity with. I think that would be great. Yeah. Because then, then it doesn't say like whatever happens there is representing Occupy Honolulu. It's just saying, hey, we stand in solidarity with and, effort. Yeah, and and at that we can say, hey, this we don't like what you're doing here, but everything else, you know, we support the people trying to do something. Okay. Point of process. Stack's been broken. So. I think Andy had his hand up first, and then um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just want to throw this out there again that um, we'll just treat it like any other occupation, like Chicago, Oakland, you know, San Francisco, Honolulu. It's not like we had to have endorsement from OWS to start an occupation, right? And this is the way I view whatever this is, right? They just got a bunch of more PR behind it than what a lot of other occupations did. And so I don't think it's really an issue of we need to endorse it or don't endorse it. You know, maybe we should send out a statement that we're in solidarity with it, but it should just be treated like any other occupation. You know, like I said, anybody is free to go start an occupation in their neighborhood. You know, you might only get two people, you know, if it's like Occupy whatever, like some small town, yeah, you know, like whatever, right, but like, how can you legitimately bitch about that, how can you legitimately say yes or no, you know, this is a good thing or a bad thing, it's a bunch of people who decided to do it, so I think that's the way it should be treated, if they want to start an occupation, they have some language out, if there's really good language that comes out of it, then it's going to end up back here anyway. Right? I mean, it's the same thing as what Wall Street did with their demands. You know, like, they put out that list of demands, and then, at least in Chicago, we picked it up right away, and then there was, like, this ridiculous debate about it until we finally realized, like, by even debating about it and, like, doing demands, and you just started to get into this weird gray area of legitimizing a government that a lot of people just didn't legitimize, whatever. So that's, that's my view on it as a whole. Is it kind of crappy that they used our name without asking? Absolutely. They removed it. They did the right thing. As far as I'm concerned, it's just another Occupy. A bunch of organizers who decided that they wanted to start an occupation. Maybe they got a little more PR behind it than what most people do, but at the end of the day, it's no different than Oakland. It's no different than Chicago. It's no different than LA or the 
thousands of other occupations around the world. It's just, this is when they chose to start. So I say we just leave it alone and treat it for what it is. It's another occupation as far as I'm concerned. I think that uh, we could potentially do a lot of this, do a lot with like this incident as far as PR is concerned. I think that if they are having a national gathering and if they are like making a list of demands, then like what we can do is we can send out like something to them from us saying like, look, we'd like you to recognize within like all of these national efforts that anything coming from here is an international effort. Yeah, it's, it's international cool. solidarity and um, that like we would be willing to stand in solidarity with what's going on in the United States, but we stand out of that. And I think that it, that because there's so much PR going going on around this, and it's getting so much national attention, that we can use this as an opportunity to further the idea of Hawaiian sovereignty. Like, it, does that sound like it could be a interesting way to deal with it? As long as you don't join join the effort, and, and, and also it's called national, right? Right, so right. That, so we would all, stand would... apart, like as an international like yeah. source of support. But like it, but if we could get them to change the way that they like show us, you know what I mean? And to like maybe see if we can get them talking about um, the like the giving back of territory to the Hawaiian people as part of their just yeah, like if, if they just recognize us as international, like that'll be huge. Well, also you have the whole uh, what Sugar brought up before about the whole idea of uh, you know nations and, and should should we be going for that you know getting involved in recognizing nations you know and all that stuff. But that to, kind of to to recognize that the that the colonialists have no power, right? In the way that people's movements recognize the the places where these movements are coming from I think is really important because those people, people for the most part have no fucking clue that Hawaii was like illegally annexed and that there was all this bullshit that went down and that it was really shady so if we can get them to even recognize that, that might be cool. I mean sending them, sharing information is always good putting out an education effort I think is great you can send it to them we, we don't have to be involved, but right. we can just send it to them. Yeah, just, just, just go. <laughs> I mean, that's one way. Um, so what about, like, some kind of... Perhaps not a press release, but some kind of statement, like a good page, page and a half statement to them. First part could be about how we feel about their wording, and then the yeah. rest of it could be about how because we are, because this nation is a sovereign nation, that to be involved would be an international effort. But, but so, also, and so I like where I like what Sam was saying about um, about asserting that, because then mm -hmm. that can get them to recognize us, and yes, given how long, how much they've kind of spun their PR machine to get. All of their information out there, yeah, it's, it's, it could it could help our cause. Okay. No. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say I really like that angle, and I think it I think it bypasses a lot of the bullshit that you know we could get bogged down in, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a good take on it. Now for support but the place in Hawaii, and maybe, you know, maybe by that effort, not only do we just kind of bypass the entire kind of gray area of what they are up to, what they're not up to, or whatever, but maybe just by having it on there, it'll get people thinking about what actually took place in Hawaii, because Sam's absolutely right. I had absolutely no idea of the horrible shit that took place on this island until Nova started talking to me about it before I came out here. Whatever. I, I didn't know. I don't think that's bad. I, didn't know. I, I wasn't exposed to it. You know? So, I think that that's an excellent way to not only 
for this issue, but there's a further knowledge to it through this, you know. I mean, you got that.
it's a really tough statement. Um, sure. I'm sure everybody knows that each occupation is independent, at least within Occupy. You know, so that kind of bypasses that, those issues. The problem is the media doesn't seem to recognize it, and they can't seem to get past the fact that there is a <coughs> But at least within the Occupy movement, I think we all can agree that each occupation is fully independent of any other occupation. Okay. Can we, no, no, it's okay. Can we get Ori in a second? No, no, no. Get over that for a while. Get over All right. Um, uh, I got a couple of responses. As for uh, putting it on the page about the uh, Hawaii's sovereignty, I think we need to be real careful about how it's written and uh, what exactly is placed. So I, we know of a couple of people that's with, that's deals with our occupation. I don't want to call them out Lo right now. Lo yeah, I don't yeah. want to call them out right away, but I think everybody here knows who they are, and yeah. we need to ask them respectfully to they, write something. They, they, they would know how to be able to properly put things uh, with our movement and their movement in a way that's not going to insult anybody. Damien already has the balls rolling on that. <laughs> yeah, he's already he's got, got rolling the balls, balls on that. <laughs> So like like that like that. You hear that, Damien? That you're having this being addressed right now. You don't even have to worry about that. Okay. Yeah, so that that's something we need to take into account. And then uh, the other thing was about the mindfulness statement. That is something that was discussed a long time ago. And I think if Andy here at some time will jump on so we can start getting a page, we'll have that taken care of real quick. Hey, there's actually some movement on it. Um, this, this little, uh, yeah, it feels very off topic right now. Who cares? Yeah, we're we're gonna start changing some shit up. Yeah, and it'll be a hell of a lot easier, and you'll actually have somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. Just make sure it's iPhone compatible uh, correctly. What we got now? Uh, okay, Orin. No, I forgot what I was gonna say. But the Heba must be recognized. There was no annexation treaty, and that it's it's a, still a nation. And that, that, of course, needs to be put forward. But we also have to weave in there, get some dialogue going on the eventual, like, borderless, nationless kind of world we kind of want to live in, you know, and, and without nations. So that needs to be addressed with this whole na national thing, also the anarchist perspective. And so we need to weave that in with the... We need to have a dialogue on that, on, on how does that fit with sovereignty. It's one of the most challenging kind of questions we can ask. But that needs to be in there somehow to be consistent, you know. And uh, we've had uh, some dialogue, just a little, little bit, but uh, that that hopefully can be weaved in. But of course, the heaven must be recognized again. No annexation treaty. We're not part of the U.S. Definitely. And, yeah. okay. You need to get back on yeah, topic yeah. though what about what we we're, discussed, we're and that was the general gathering or the national gathering. Sorry. Anybody else have anything to say about the National Gathering? Um, I would be at this time inclined not to do an endorsement, just because I don't view that morning either. It doesn't need an endorsement, as far as I'm concerned, it's like any other occupation, they can do whatever the hell they want. So, I, I you I, know, and, and with respect to, um, them coming out with any kind of statement or anything like that, let's see what it is. If it's something we like, we'll bring it to GA and then maybe we can endorse it then. If it's total garbage, then we have an opportunity to be completely independent of it and put out a statement condemning it. So, I, at, like I said, at, at this time, I would be disinclined to, uh, to give any kind of endorsement. Or just as one is vague, you know, language issues, with, with democracy, are they talking about direct democracy? Are they talking about majority rules? You know, um, it is vague, and like I said before, it may not be nefarious, but we don't know that. And I wouldn't be inclined to have our name put on something that ends up turning out to be something that we don't envision. So that's how I stand on the issue as of this. I just want to really quickly ask that we change our language from endorse to stand in solidarity with, unless we're putting forth any like active um, like.
financial support or whatever else it takes to, yeah, any other, like, endorsement. Because I, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable with us using that word to describe what we would be giving to them. Uh, in a direct, direct response, uh, they have the, the section listed as solidarity. You know, I mean, that's not the problem. It's just once you get to the page itself of all the occupations that's in solidarity with it, they have this nice little phrase, has your home occupy endorse the National Gathering? Email us at info. So what they're wanting us to do is, no matter what, they're saying it's an endorsement, but it's in a solidarity section. So just so everybody knows, there is no other way of rephrasing it. The way no, they have I it on their site. If we could, within ourselves, instead of calling it endorsement, which I think speaks to like some big like corporate, it sounds like some big corporate conspiracy to me when people say like, oh, we're going to endorse this. We're going to like endorse this candidate. We're going to endorse this nation that they've like wrongly grouped us in a part of. But I, I think we can we can stand in solidarity without endorsing. Right. Right. Wait, wait, so wait, the name with with them or not? Yeah, not necessarily. So, well, I think. Oh, well, hang on. Orin was up on stuff. Oh no, I, I was saying you can endorse their actions. Is that what you're you saying? can stand in solidarity, yeah, solidarity, solidarity with, them. with them, but not endorse them because that is yeah, it's like, kind of it, like that. That seems like a sticky place. You're, 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 going, going. you're going with. Mm. Uh, Sounds um, really. Like yeah, you're, you're kind of being a part of their group. Yeah, yeah. And like, I, I don't, I don't think that we're in that group because of where we stand on the like the sovereignty issues. You know what I mean? But I think we can reasonably stand in solidarity with their efforts. If if they do do some efforts which are worthy, we can stand in solidarity with that effort. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Have to be, yeah. Yeah. With each effort. Oh. I just have a direct response um, to that. I, so I think I think we should say no. We don't endorse it. But when we write the letter complaining about the language and stuff, we make sure that they know. Like we stand in solidarity with the people, like the individuals who are putting this group together. Um, we don't necessarily endorse the group as a whole, what they stand for, until we know what they stand for. But you know, I can I, I will stand in the in solidarity with the individuals who are trying to make this world a better place. You know, and doing what they can to do. But does so. it fall within a vision for a democratic future, right? Like that's that's the thing that it seems like these guys are trying to get at. I jump stack, sorry. Um, well, I don't know. So I just yeah, I feel like clarifying the the wording of all of it. Um, but we don't necessarily like just because we don't endorse it. I don't want to make I want to make sure that they don't think we're condemning it. Is where yeah, I'm going yeah, that's all I, that's all I, that's all I want to Not endorsing clear. something is not the same as out and out condemning it. Know, we're not we're not going to like hold signs that say God hates Nat Gad. You know, and we're not going to like picket picket the funerals of people who are the victims of police brutality. We're not going to do that. But like we can we can say like ah but uh, uh, but ah, you know. Yeah, I think all right. Okay, sorry, sorry. All right, so I'm going to personally take it upon myself to start filling out this uh, statement for it. Uh, Sam, Doug, and you, you if you want to, keep bugging me about this <laughs> so that I can keep working on it. Um, I'll try to get something, like, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot for a final draft on Thursday. Hopefully we can have something that we can work with. Also, for the live stream, because I finally found it, I'm going to, if that's cool with everyone, I want to read the, uh, the uh, mindfulness, or the mind, mindful participation uh, Are statement. we done with this particular topic? I think yeah, it's part of parcel. Let's close the deck. Be okay. Yeah. Can we talk about this? Any objections to... I don't, what, what I don't know procedure. I, I need that mindful statement before. I'm reading but, it. Uh, yeah, but okay. I just didn't want to close without mentioning about the we'll event today. Oh, we're going to move yeah, to that. Yeah, we're going to close okay. the session. Okay. All right, all right. <clears throat> So this is not the original mindfulness statement that we've been reading from the very first day, but I, I found it. It was buried in the website and hidden from the actual... It's supposed to be on there, but it's not because the site's broken. But... <laughs> So I, I've spruced it up a little bit, kind of updated it. Feel free to continue to give me feedback on this. Anyways, 
So mindful participation. As each of us participates in a general assembly, online and in any other setting, I shall make every effort to speak from personal experience with I statements rather than talk about you, all of humanity, or any other group. I shall strive to make my relationship with others while, or I shall strive to talk about my relationship with others while we're refraining from speaking for them. I recognize that the gross inequality of wealth is built upon colonization, displacement, and marginalization based on ethnicity, nationality, class, age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, and more. I shall consider my own privileges as we create a safe and accepting space for each other's freedom of expression with respectful listening, speech, and actions. In embracing a diversity of tactics, I understand that fighting unchecked authority and inequality on all fronts rocks the foundation that corporate dominance and economic exploitation are built upon. I will respect another perspective and include their differences, so the synthesis of our continued work can be transformative and truly revolutionary. So that, that, that closes that. Mindfulness state bed! Woo! Okay. Do you have to close it? Like, are we going to pass, like, the letter that's in the end? Well done. 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 Well I don't, I don't want to say too much without giving it away to everybody, but say something like how there's going to be an information booth with, you know, videos or literature, just however you want to phrase it that doesn't give away too much, but that will get people really excited, like, hey, there's going to be something really big that I can get a lot of information for, like, I can learn anything, essentially, on any, you know, sustainable topic, whatever. Because, again, it starts at 4 p.m., and I take it the uh, panel discussions at 7 to 9. So, yeah, there's uh, uh, yeah, three hours there, and I guess some will be set up, but it would be great if we can start at 4 p.m. Instead of people, you know, standing around just following. We need to get something spinning on that, the wheel. Oh, what might well, be? Oh, well, hang on, Andrew oh, was... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just... Um, I thought you were going to solve Yeah, no. <laughs> um, sorry. Oh, okay, I did. Um, yeah, so let's fire. What's on there is the information that I was given. So, I still have the, the, the PSD to update it. If there's updates that need to be done to it, I can make it as long as that I'm seeing the door. I already spent money on printing. So, they're already out there. So, I would say just leave it the hell alone for now. Also, if you want to actually get people in the park, telling me a week before the event to make a flyer is not in our best interest. A month is a short lead time, okay? Preferably two months, because you need them, you know, like, and that's when, like, everything should be finalized, is two months before an event. And then that gives you time to, to make sure that shit's going to go right, to actually plan instead of running into, like, stupid-ass issues. And then also... It gives us time to raise money, and it actually gives you time to hop on buses and plaster the shit out of the city. But if you tell someone a week before, and announce it a week before, about the best thing you're going to get is a flyer that you throw up on Facebook and Twitter. That's not how you get people down here. I just want people to be mindful of that. Like, we're in it for the long haul. This shit isn't going to change next week. So there's really no harm. It's in not. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I hate to break your bubble, but it's not going to. So actually doing it responsibly, like most campaigns and shit have already started um, their online, you know, petitions or whatever, like their social media and all that shit six months before they hold an event. <laughs> So, you do it a week before, you're going to get the same people you see at GA. You do it two months before, and especially on something like this, I think we really fucking uh, blew it. 
because from what I understand, these are big name people who actually know their shit, and this is a big deal that Midori and Damien were able to throw together. This is hot shit. And we didn't do ourselves justice by giving such a short lead time to do it. So that's all I want to say about the flyer. If you guys want me to change it, I'll change it. But like I said, I think, I mean, but today's the 14th. It's in six days. Like, I don't know what the hell we're going to do in six days if we change the flyer. So I just leave it alone and start thinking more forward instead of this. You know, two weeks before an event, hey, maybe we should get a flyer together with we a bunch of hands. Can clarify some of the times going? Okay, Sam. Okay, so as far as PR for this event goes, Andy, do you need uh, leafletters? Do you already have, like, leaflets all printed out and stuff, ready to go, flyers and stuff? I don't money for printing, and as far as I know, TA doesn't either. Okay, so uh, 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 approximately... As far as like your your knowledge is concerned, how how much money would be ideal for printing? Um, I can tell you April seventh is if I remember correctly, for April seventh in Chicago we gave our and Rec two grand for flyers. Okay, I'm just talking about for this like specific event. Well, I mean the city is significantly smaller than Chicago, but printing costs money. Yeah, Obviously, so we don't have that kind of money, so... So, if, if we can get black and... If we can get things that are, like, like good for black and white printing... Yeah. Um, if we can get those flyers, I know uh, a place... I, I know a place that'll do them for two and a half cents a page. Whoa. Like, right down the street. Sure. And so, like, we we can... Like, I, I'd be willing to throw, like, like three bucks down on that. We well, you can make it. Like, the ones that... I'm sorry. Is, is so, it okay if I'm and, and I'd be willing to go out and do like a few hours, like a few hours of leafleting too for this event within the next couple of days. So if we can get like just like personally, just maybe like a couple more bucks, then we can just go out and like we can just leaflet. We can go, we can run, and we can drop off flyers at the at Rev Book. Like I can run around and do all of that stuff with you guys. But I just need to know like like what. So I feel like I'm down uh, one, the flyers are in 11 by 17, okay, which is actually pretty big. And I'm making that big because I actually intend to print them off and frame them. Um, but they can be resized. We can get four on a regular sheet of paper and copying dirt cheap for, like, regular flyers or whatever. The other thing about it um, that I would suggest and Sugar and I actually did this in Chicago, and it worked out pretty well because nobody gave a shit. But we plastered like oh, thank you. Um. Anyway, so you want to think about what are high traffic areas, right? We went all the way up and down from the almost from the top of the blue line, all the way down to Downtown. the Jackson stop, which was a block and a half away from Jackson and LaSalle, where we were launching from. And that's, what, like, 12 stops? Right. Something like that? Uh, we were up at... It was about 30 to 40 blocks. Right, 30 to 40 blocks, right? So a really awesome place to do it um, is if somebody has, like, an unlimited bus, because that shit's going to get super expensive uh-huh. out here, obviously. Right. Yeah. Like, I would buy three-day passes in Chicago, so it was unlimited rides, but, you know, you only get that one stupid-ass transfer ticket, or whatever, ride a bus, and get off at each bus stop, and plaster the shit out of the bus station, why, because that's where people gather, and we plastered the crap out of, uh, in in Chicago, a lot of them are, like, underground, so there's these, like, glass structures over the stairs and shit, and plastered the shit out of it, those are high-traffic areas, so you get more bang for your buck. We actually got somebody who wrote on it saying that that was a great event that they had gone to it on one of them that we had put up. Get in on the bus drivers. Here's the other really cool thing. If we can talk to, like, the bus drivers and get them on our side, they actually waited, like, a full minute and a half while she screwed around with the tape because she couldn't find the end of it to plaster the shit out of a side of a train. And then when we walked by, the bus driver was like, hell yeah, sat there in the station while we did this shit. And I plastered the shit out of the doors. And everything. Why? Because they weren't going to take them down, and it was high traffic. So that's the areas that we we need to hit. 
you know? No, uh, super, super high, uh, sorry, super high traffic area here, as far as, like, working people, I would say just hit up all of the bus stops along Tokyo, just, like, stop, in, like, just, like, park somewhere, you know, just go all the way up and down through Waikiki, just plaster the shit out of those bus stops, and then the bus stop, like, I, I, I know exactly where all of the high traffic bus stops are, like, within, within walking distance of this camp alone, and what you'll do is you'll hit up the people who are working downtown, you'll hit up the hotel people at, in, in Waikiki, um, and then all of, like, that messaging, that'll take you all the way to, like, Waipahu, because that's where the, those people live. Right, they like bust into work every every fucking morning from like Malihi, Waipahu. Uh, I would say putting putting stuff up in strategic lo locations downtown will get you an appropriate number of like white collar people who are sympathizing with us. Uh, but like if you put it outside of the outside of district court, those are really really high traffic bus stops. Um, and then the bus stop near uh, on Punchbowl and and Baritania and Punchbowl and King Street. Yeah, like like it, it, it's pretty easy to do, and I'd be willing to take a day out to do to just go run around and do a bunch of flyering and, and stuff. Do we have local organizations that we've teamed up with previously that? would stand in solidarity with this event that we could give flyers to and have them yes. distribute? Yes. And also to their mailing list. Yes. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, we'll take it to World Can't Wait. What we can do is we can take it to, uh, we could probably also take it to the Defend Oahu Coalition, and they would probably be pretty cool about, like, just like a blind delegation. Like, I can, I can make lists of uh, organizations and get their addresses and like we can just take a day and we can just do delegations and get get our flyers to places and like I would be more than happy. And ask for e blast. That. Ask them to e blast it. Yeah, yeah. Like that we we can just make a list of the things that we want to ask them and we'll just go in and do it. But like I, I need a day. Like we can we can if we can do this, like to, I'm free I'm free on next week Monday if we can get this all together by Monday and, and we can do it by Monday is that a fair amount of time two days before the event uh, today's Thursday so tomorrow's Friday yeah I'd, I'd like to work on, okay. work on the flyer I possibly so if we can get together with Damien or whatever but if you want to Damien or Midori yeah I mean I have time tonight that's it and I'm out <laughs> till the event uh, but if not, we'll figure it out. Uh, but the other thing was, um, uh, yeah, to, just getting the information, you know, of, of what's going to happen. We could even we could even probably do this by email. Um, so do you want me to do that? Do you want me to get a list of all the emails together, yeah. and then we can just like? I mean, I don't think that's really. Good. That's a conversation. Okay, we can, we can have, is that, is that something you'd be interested in talking about with me later, though? Yeah, yeah, Okay, for sure. We'll just sit down and figure it out. I think right now, the is just listening to us have a conversation that can take place outside of the end. I know, but I just really want to nail this to make sure it happens officially. Well, then why don't you guys get together after GA is done? I, I prefer that, sure. but I'm just trying to really handle it. That's why I want it to be official. So. So, uh, yeah, our GA officially endorses our conversation. Yay! <laughs> right. Point of process. I do not endorse, I stand in solidarity. Do it and just not forget it. Point of process. Point of vagina. Guys. Alright, so, <clears throat> so conversation straight a little bit. We are, uh, I guess, finished with the agenda. There are no more announcements to do. I have a little. We have one. Yes, a new one? Just keep popping up. You have one up? Matt? Oh, well, there's, um, there's some very important stuff in the news today. Uh, if anybody doesn't Sorry, know... Sorry, can you talk up news? just a little bit? <clears throat> there's some very important news in, in the news today. Uh, it's about the TPP. Does anybody not... Does anybody even know what that is? It's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. 
and it's APEC on steroids. Yeah. And it's it's all about uh, making corporations much more powerful than governments, and forcing governments to do things and not and disallowing laws that that regulate uh, over a wide swath of countries all around the Pacific. All the APEC countries plus other countries. Um, I don't want to try to paraphrase all of it. I just, I would just want to encourage everybody to watch. Well, Democracy Now is a, is a great way to get your news on this. I brought my computer down. If anybody, if anybody wants to watch it afterwards, but it's something that Occupy is going to be very interested in. Um, it's actually through the World Trade the WTO that, that this stuff that a bunch of lawyers are trying to pass through. It's, 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 it's don't lead into global fascism at, at, its, at its core. It's the kind of thing that no way would ever stand the light of day, but it's being done in secret. One chapter of many, many chapters slipped out and uh, was leaked into the news today. And, and oh. already it's like, whoa, how can anything like this ever occur? No way you can let this happen. Was this but, the thing that Obama was really all about? Yeah. Okay, so I linked up. Well, it's uh, APEC countries is what this is all about. APEC is largely connected with Obama, so I don't want to try to say what or what isn't Obama. I think Obama is, I don't know, he's out to lunch with this. Uh, anyway. That's a lunch with his <laughs> But uh, everybody should. I think, I would encourage everybody to educate themselves on what's going on with TPP because uh, Occupy uh, will be very, around the world, will be very interested in the subject and uh, to be on top of it would be good. Clarifying question. All right. TPP is Trans Pacific Partnership? Yeah. All right. So I got that down and I'll be looking into that. Yeah. Clarifying question. Is it is it like an actual meeting? Of people, like, is there going to be an event yeah. that we can? Yeah, the next, the next where it is? meeting is in San Diego. The last one was in Austin, Texas, or Dallas, Texas. Um, it, it, they're saying that the that the principals and there is a core group of like three lawyers will be the the, the head um, the people making all the rules and, and enforcing all the rules. They're in Honolulu right now. Um, ironing out the details <laughs> and <laughs> putting all the legalistic language, all the legislation, all the legalistic language into this thing. And it's the kind of thing that's going to bind multiple countries around the world. We're talking Russia, we're talking... Uh, Trans-Pacific, yeah. Yeah, all around the Pacific. Uh, all these countries. And, and they're making the kinds of rules that will take every country's participation in order to get rid of the rule, okay, and the World Trade Organization is not something that can just go away, um, so I, I just heard the report on it tonight, okay, and uh, I don't I don't want to influence every, everybody's opinion and experience of it when they first heard, hear the news, I just want to encourage everybody to educate themselves on what the TPP is about. Occupy around the world, I'm sure, will be up in arms about this thing. And uh, it's a new thing, and it's an important thing. Uh, we're, we're talking global fascism here. So. Orin, uh, yeah, Orin. Orin. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's wonderful you brought it up, and it, it, it's great. And May 1st, that's what the march was going to be about, TPP, and Midori was going to give a, a speech about that. It's just that it got diverted by Laulani. Right. And, and so we were all prepared, like Jake knows, that we're going to talk about NAFTA and TPP. And we, you know, I have some videos that I did when APEC was here and Laurie Ballard talking about TPP. So we have some uh, locally produced stuff, you know, and the, the Laurie Ballard, uh, the, the trade publicist. So we can, we can use some of those efforts, you know, in some way soon. So we'll, we'll talk about that more, but keep bringing it up to remind us. There's a lot of new information on it out there. A lot of new information on it out there. One cha one significant okay, chapter is the state of the that uh, is waking a lot of people up. Are we?
Mr. Facilitator. I just, I just had to. Oh, yeah. Well, clarifying question first. Are you sit there in Honolulu right now? We should because find out the, the hotels. The principals are, are in Honolulu ironing out some of the some of the last details of the legalistic language that will be binding on several countries. I mean, it's the kind of thing that countries can no longer, the laws of countries will be completely ignored uh, in favor of this kind of legislation. It's, it's, for defense of the country, capitalism, one yeah. of the other it's things. All, it's like all that. about corporations over governments. Right. It, it's about corporate deregulation and increasing corporate power. That's yeah. what it is. Free trade. Free trade. Free trade. Free trade. Free trade. Are we done with this conversation? No, because Andrew had some time. No, I, I just turned off. Okay. okay. Uh, when, so it's happening now. I mean, I'd be willing to go down there somehow with this sign or something. Yeah, let's get that sign out. I mean, it's very important because this is the one percent of the one percent of the one percent. This is the one percent. This is this is like totally what it's about. You know, the elite. Yeah, yeah, it's a lead on steroids, as we said. It's, it's a large step towards taking over the world. You know, but if they're staying in Waikiki, try get a tent down in Waikiki and <laughs> not get Fun. happened by the police, Fun. right? <laughs> uh, we'll still concentrate on this. Uh, well, we'll still do this, obviously, but I'm full in. But, but we need to find out more about this. And So how many days is it happening over the weekend? Well, it's not an event. They're just somewhere here. I know, but how many more days are they here? Can we uh, inform it's everybody? Not public info. I bet yeah, there's some public information. As matter of fact, all this is very secretive stuff. Extremely secretive stuff. That this one chapter leaked out was was okay. A problem. <laughs> and, and you know what? They're setting it up to where this this information, all this legalistic language, and the stuff that's binding on all these different countries. They're setting up it up so that the disclosure of the contents of all this legislation will not be released until four years after it is enacted. Yes. That's progression. <laughs> that that is efficient fascism. That is. You they're they're starting to do a really good job at this yeah, now, are, aren't they? Yeah, like they pick scared you before it should. Oh, this is not out of you. This, 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 oh, no, totally. Hyatt's website. Hyatt's uh, website. It's snapped on steroids. I'm just listening to you talk about it, and, like, the amount of fear that's welling up within me is causing me to make inappropriate jokes. Okay. <laughs> so um, we'll discuss it. Lay thumbs back. Alright. Um, you had mentioned that this is, like, APEC on steroids. Uh, Napta. Napta. So, uh, my question is that, is it APEC on steroids, or is APEC something else, and then you have well, to the reason it? I said APEC is because it's all the APEC countries. That was but it's organized by the WTO. Obama, yeah. Including the U.S. and Russia, which is, you know, and it's huge. Read into it. Yeah, okay, I just heard I just heard the report on it tonight, so I can't report accurately on it for the record. I, but I want everybody to educate themselves on it. Democracy Now is a good way to do that. It's a very good report on Democracy Now. The latter part of Democracy today is Democracy Now. Mm -hmm. so, I I I got to film Lori Wallach talking about NAFTA, TPP, and all that stuff during NAFTA. So she get, gives you a good grounding on the whole whole system. I'll email everybody if you want on that. Yeah. Can you put it to my Facebook instead of emailing it to me? Because I never actually. Speak, yeah, speak I would it. prefer that. Okay, Facebook. <laughs> and, and, and for what Can people we, uh, watch my video? Just <laughs> tag me. <laughs> Can we? All right, that conversation wrapped up. Yeah. A few announcements. Yeah. Just um. Just uh, two quick announcements, I guess. Um, in the very near future, I intend to bring two proposals to GA. One, about what to do about our website, so that we can actually get something functional, and, but obviously that requires GA endorsement. Also, I know, I think I announced it on Tuesday, um, Verizon's road plan for their data pricing, and how they're restructuring 
um, some of that kind of stuff was leaked, which is great because it's supposed to take effect next year. So that's ample amount of time to get that shit squashed because it's just blatant rape of their customers. They are the number one carrier in the United States, and it's absolutely bullshit that they're using that to, uh, to slash the amount of data that people can use and then charge them double what they're charging now. Um, so I intend to bring a proposal to GA on that. So what I'm announcing right now is I intend to do that. I would like input. I would like people to work with me on this. This is what I'm going to be working on for the next week to two weeks and then bringing it to GA. So if you want to work on that and you want your voice in the proposal, we have to actually do something. So um, we can figure that all out and start working. I, I, I'm sorry, I'd just like to state for the record, I'm just uncomfortable with the way that, uh, you have, like, like, connected rape with, like, this, this plan, you know what I mean? So, like, I just hope that that would, since, since we're being recorded, that that's not, like, <coughs> part of our messaging, you know what I mean? Okay, well, I, I, I apologize to, for my choice of words. Okay, okay, I just want to, like, make it's sure that that's all police. clear. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not an issue. Of they are not being very issue. nice to their customers and stealing money from them because they have the capacity to do so. There we go. I like that. I suppose would be right the semantic correct. Rhetorically. 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 Rhetorically on point, sir. Rhetorically. So if I offended you, I do apologize. Yeah, it's, it was not mine. It's cool. We're just being recorded, so I just thought it. <laughs> Announcements, proposals, discussion topics. Does Orin want to ramble? <laughs> no, I, I know that I, I won't be at another GA for two months or something. Well, so where I, are you going? No, I, it's not like my fourth GA, so I, mean, I think I should, but I, I can mention it later. We'll leave that as the last. Uh, okay. So, in closing, uh, thank you all for coming here. Um, it's great to see you here. Are you just gonna draw this out? No. What's? Can we adjourn? Yeah. No. Close. Adjourn. Okay. Uh. What? Bad? Yeah. Just go up there find out what's going on.